Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Misner Media tutorial, we'll be taking a look at how to create a dramatic HDR type grade inside of DaVinci Resolve. This is a look that I've really been liking recently. It's really good for sort of grittier music video type stuff, and I can see it being used on like car commercials and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and get started. So here I've got this pretty bland clip of some traffic that I shot with uh, my new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. And this is a ProRes HQ, I believe. So, you know, it's fine. It's whatever. But we can really bump it up and make it extreme looking. So the first thing we're going to do is hop over to our Color Match tab. And here we've got these handy highlight and shadow controls. So I'm just going to bring the highlights way down and the shadows way up. And now you see you get this really kind of even worse looking super ultra flat image. But we're going to really kind of pull this apart and make it really punchy and, and really hardcore looking. So you're going to get a little bit of a radius around here. It's going to look like kind of a bad HDR, but that's kind of a cool look. So we're going to go with it. So you're going to contrast this way back up. You may be thinking, Theo, we just recovered all that detail from the shadows and highlights. Why are you getting it away? Well, actually, the highlight and shadows controls down here do more than just pulling up the lift and down the gain. It works in such a way that whenever you go back and make it contrasty again, you sort of expand out the information that is in the, the lift and gain. So it's more kind of localized contrast within the luminance range. So you're able to get this really neat looking thing. So you're just going to kind of punch this up pretty hardcore. We're going to make it pretty dramatic. We'll move our gain up. I'm thinking gritty car commercial for this, even though it's just kind of boring traffic kind of, you know, around. So that's kind of a good start. Let's see, you know, before and after we're really kind of grittying things up. Another thing you can do to make it look even more kind of like a bad HDR is bring your midtone detail up. And we're also going to bring our color boost up some, which just kind of gets you that more cartoony type saturation. It's not exactly the same as a saturation control, but you see it really brings out those oranges and blues. And we're going to get rid of some of that green. And you see there's a lot of noise in the footage right now. You're going to have noise whenever you do this HDR thing, unless you're using a really fancy camera. But I'm just using a Blackmagic Pocket camera, so it'll be pretty noisy still. Hop back over to our color wheels and... Let's bring the saturation up just a little bit because that color boost didn't go all the way for me. And the next thing we're going to do is kind of make this look a little bit more interesting. So we're going to move our offset to the orangey side. And now it's looking way neater. But what if we move our gain to the blue side and create that color contrast? So that's starting to look pretty neat now. I might even move the lift just a little bit. Not that much though. Just a little bit down. Because I like having this contrast of the uh, sort of cyan blues and oranges up here. It's getting a little bit blue up in the sky. And I think I'm going to add another serial node and just take that out. So I'm going to add, you know, one of these graduated filters. Just pull it up here. And make sure this sky is nice and orange. And maybe even darken it down some. Because why not? Not that much though. Jeez Louise. Calm down. All right. So we're getting somewhere here. The next thing I'm going to do is add sort of a little vignette around this. So we'll add another serial node and we'll make uh, a circle. Since I just watched some more video copilot tutorials recently, we're going to pay homage to that and make an oval vignette. I normally do circle ones, but you know, shout out to the After Effects users out there. Let's quick invert this and bring our gamma down. That's looking pretty dramatic. And as we play this through, we'll see we really kind of want to highlight these cars. So instead of going through and tracking them all individually, let's just make kind of a, a strip in the middle where it gets a little lighter. So holding down control on Windows, command on a Mac, and clicking these little handles, you can scale them both out uh, simultaneously. Without that, it's just one at a time. And then we can do the same thing here. Unfortunately, though, it does not work for feathering. So you got to do that individually. Just pretty annoying, but you know, you win some, you lose some. We'll crank this gamma up some and bring the lift back down to sort of compensate, bring the gain up. See, it's getting really grainy up in here. So what we're going to do to get rid of that grain is over in our first node, hop over to our motion effects tab. And unfortunately, noise reduction is something that's only available in the full version of DaVinci Resolve. So if you're using the light version, uh, sorry. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the spatula noise reduction. And what this does is it kind of takes a radius of pixels and averages them together, which kind of loses more detail than the temporal noise reduction, which samples different frames. But there's so much movement in this 
in this clip that temporal noise reduction will make it look even worse than spatula noise reduction. So I'm just going to make this radius medium, which will hurt my computer a little bit more, but look a little bit better. And now that's kind of, that's a lot right there. So, you know, it's not very noisy anymore, but it's also kind of crappy looking. So moving this noise reduction blend, you can kind of change how much, it's like the opacity of the noise reduction. So you can just sort of reduce it a little bit. That's looking a little better. Hit Alt F and C. That's looking pretty nice. I feel like it needs to be a little bit more punchy still even. You know me, I like those grades that really hit you in the face. So we'll go over to our curves tab and let's go to, whoop, not that, luminance versus saturation and let's pull the saturation out of the shadows. Give it a little bit more of that cinematic vibe. Pump up the middle a little bit. Bring the gain down just kind of like that, a little S curve. And that's starting to look pretty neat. And lastly, let's kind of screw up the colors even more. Bump up the saturation just a smidgen. The gain up a smidgen more. Move a little bit more towards the yellow side. Move the lift a little bit more towards the blue side. Move the gamma to where it looks interesting. Maybe about right there. And then we move the offset some to sort of counterbalance what we just did. Yeah, I think that helped out a lot. Kind of gave it that little extra polish. And now if we see before and after, it's a completely different vibe. This looks kind of, you know, awful. It's a pretty boring shot and, you know, <laughs> it looks pretty bad. But then you do this and people are like, what is going on? This crazy Instagram madness. You know, it's a look. And you can use it for whatever you think you'd want to use it for. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to see more tutorials like this, be sure to subscribe to the Meissner Media YouTube channel. If you want to see even more Meissner Media stuff, we've got links for social media stuff down in the description below. While you're checking out social media, be sure to share this video on your various social media stuff. You can also comment on the video and tell me what you think and like and dislike appropriately. Once again, I've been Theo with Meissner Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.